Well, today we begin a four-week study in the Smith and Hellways Formation series entitled Luke's Christmas Story. And this month, we'll be taking a look at some of the characters that Luke presents to us. There are many characters in Luke's Gospel that are worth noting and learning from. And we're going to take a look at a few of them as we go through our study today. Today, our lesson is entitled Gabriel and Mary. And we'll be looking at Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. This is an interruption story, a holy interruption. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not real fond of interruptions. I'm somewhat of a planner. Uh, I'm the kind of person that likes to get up in the morning, have my list, if I didn't make it already the day before, of the things that are really important and the things that I really want to get accomplished. Well, sure enough, as I begin down that path, it's not unusual for someone to interrupt me. When that happens, I'm not always the friendliest person. Sometimes it seems to me that that interruption is really pulling me over into their game plan and away from mine. As we think about the Bible, you know, it's a book that is full of interruptions. God interrupts his people when he wants to invite them to join him in the work that he's doing at that time. Whether we're talking about Abraham or Moses or King David or the Apostle Paul, all seem to be going along on a life path when God interrupted. Now, two years ago, we did a church-wide study on experiencing God. And one of the things that we learned from Dr. Blackaby in that study was, anytime God reveals himself to us, that's his way of inviting him to join us. That's his way of giving us a holy interruption. And when that happens, we have to make a choice. Do we continue on with what we were doing? Or do we stop and allow that interruption to focus us on how we might join God in his work? There's no better example of this than what we find in today's text with the angel Gabriel visiting Mary and saying, God has a plan for you. And it was an interruption for sure. I love what Gabriel says in verse 30. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. That almost sounds like the nominating committee when they come to ask us to teach the children or to be on the personnel committee or to serve on the stewardship. Now, there are three key lines to me that stood out in today's verses. In verse 34, Mary says, how can this be? Mary is surprised. She's probably fearful. The interruption is, you're going to have a child. Mary was betrothed to Joseph. She was in a covenant relationship. And now all of a sudden, she's going to be pregnant with child. Pretty big interruption. The second phrase that jumps out at me in verse 37 is when Gabriel says, for nothing will be impossible with God. Now, that sounds like something that you would read on a fortune cookie or something that a deacon might say when you find yourself in a time of trouble. But think about that. How does our faith inform us when God interrupts us and invites us to join him in a work that we cannot imagine. It's difficult to imagine anything comparing with Mary finding out that she's going to be pregnant. The third line in verse 38, when Mary comes to full realization that this is God's plan, she says, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. We see acceptance. We see submission. And we see action. What do we learn about God in this story? Well, we learn that our God does things in unexpected ways. He surprises us. When he invites us to join him, often we can't imagine being a part of what he invites us to do. And what do we learn about ourselves? We learn that we dislike interruptions. We learn that we like to be in control. We learn that we don't want to be afraid. And then consider what the rewards are for being obedient 
and for joining God when he invites us. You know, it's not always going to be worldly rewards. Consider Mary. Consider how her life was difficult all the way to seeing her son die on the cross. No one would be able to say that she experienced great rewards here on earth. But we know that our rewards are treasures that are stored in heaven. So often when God invites us, we don't want to be confused by thinking that somehow our earthly lives are going to be enhanced because of our obedience. That's not really the reward. But the reward is contentment, peace, being blessed with the spirit of knowing that we are in God's will. In other words, we will live joyful lives. So what's the practical application from this lesson this week? I think there's at least three things. Number one, cultivate an awareness of where God is working around us. You know, we do that best when we spend time in his word, when we spend time quietly meditating on the word, when we spend time listening to God and talking with God in prayer, and when we fellowship with other believers. This helps us cultivate an understanding of where God is at work around us. Number two, expect an invitation from God. If we're in communication with God, he'll be able to break through the clutter in our lives and show us what he's doing and invite us to join him. And when he gives us that invitation, don't expect it to be something that's comfortable. And finally, know that God intends to bless us. Nothing is impossible with God, as the angel said. God will wants to bless us and wants what's best for us. Well, I hope this week as you study this lesson and you read this text, I hope you will be blessed as you find in the story of Gabriel and Mary a word for you about what your role is in God's plans. I hope you'll also join us these next three weeks as we continue this study. Until next time, God bless you. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Oh,